Hi, I'm Chuck with IWS Sales. We're out here on this beautiful winter weather. I'll be modeling uh, our new IWS summer wear today <laughs> because I'm a glutton for punishment and trying to look good on the video for everybody out there. So I hope it meets everybody's approval because it is cold out here today. But what a great day to show off this Peterbilt uh, 567. You know, we only get two to three of these a year, so it's it's a pretty rare treat to have one of these. And another neat thing about this one in the middle of the winter is this one has our upgraded uh, ceramic temp coat, our winter package, severe winter package on it. So this is equipped with uh, R26 insulation, so it's perfect for a day like today. I think it's around 25 to maybe 28 degrees today with the wind, might be a little bit cooler. Anyways, today's focus is gonna be a lot on the chassis because I know a lot of people, including some of my friends that have called in are very interested in this uh, Peterbilt chassis, what it has to offer, whether or not it's the right chassis for them or not. So we're gonna go through some of the particulars on it. One of the main difference between this and our, um, the Freightliners is that this is equipped with the Cummins ISX 15. It's at uh, 605 horsepower, 1,850 foot-pounds of torque. Where most of the trucks we had or, or chassis are equipped with the Detroit engines, there's an awful lot of Cummins lovers out there, and that's why we brought this one in. Um, could be just a really good fit for a lot of people. Well, she's 41 foot, six inches long, and that's from the front bumper to the back. Incidentally, this is the exact same floor plan on my personal coach, so I'm pretty fond of this one. Um, it's something that we've really been dialing in and perfecting it over the years. Everybody asks how much the MSRP on it is, and this one is $779,880. But of course, if you tell them Chuck sent you, I'll get you an extra 500 bucks off. So make sure you mention my name. All right. so. Things to talk about on this Peterbilt. One of the things as you'll notice is it's got a very uh, iconic look to it. If we move around to the front of the coach, you can really see that Peterbilt front end coming to life. And it's something that, that you know, people that are in the trucking industry, um, it's kind of the Ford Chevy thing, right? There's Peterbilt guys, Kenworth guys, and Freightliner guys. It's just got a, a really good, look to it. All right, so here we are in the front. As you can see, it's got this very iconic uh, remote mounted headlamps. These are HID full width chrome front bumper, stainless steel visor overhead. Um, I really do like the mirrors on the Peterbilt. Um, I think they do a great job in the wind of not vibrating or not buffeting much on it. And uh, yeah, it's just a great looking coach. I think I've said that a dozen times now. So we're gonna go ahead and open up the hood and talk a little bit about this Cummins power in here. Just. Here we are, we've got the hood tilted forward. Some of the things that I talk about on every video is why I like these Class C, or I like to call them Super C's, is just the accessibility to service on these. So the Cummins, uh, well, I guess it's the X15 rather than the ISX15. Um, it's hard to keep up on all the models, but one thing I can tell you about this thing is this is an engine that quite, frequently would go in excess of a million miles. I tell everybody, if you own one of these Renegades with this type of power, the best thing you can do is get out on the road and drive them. That is what they're meant to do. Um, this thing is designed, this particular engine and chassis is designed to haul 80 plus thousand pounds all day long, every day up and down the highway for people that are making their living with their truck. This package right here is weighing in right at 40,000 pounds, so you're not even uh, you're not even loading the engine up hardly. So um, it's a great power pack. You can see lots of accessibility to the filters and uh, to dipstick and everything to check the oil. But to be honest with you, 
The service interval on this engine is probably, I haven't confirmed on the, on the uh, X15, but I believe it's up around 25,000 miles is the oil change interval on it. So you'll be like Hank on King of the Hill, you'll uh, change your oil every uh, year or when you get bored. <laughs> uh, because quite honestly, many people don't even put 25,000 miles on their motorhome in a lifetime. I think it's a shame. I think you should get these things out and just run the hell out of them. Okay, now we're gonna work our way back to coach, talk about a lot of the features as we go. We're gonna cover the axles. I think I'll talk more about that when we get back to the rear tandems, but here we go. As we move down the coach, you can see this uh, 120 gallon fuel tank. Accessibility into the coach is pretty easy. You got nice steps right here, a nice grab handle, so you can go up and in, in and out of the coach. There's another grab handle right here. So that's something I really like. I like being able to pull up at a fuel stop and not have to walk through the coach. I like to be able to climb right out, fuel it up, then get back in it and leave. So I really uh, like the accessibility on this coach. Now, as we move back, we're gonna start going through compartment doors. Inside of here is the DEF tank, and that stands for diesel exhaust fluid. It's a secondary additive that you're gonna put into this. So when you, for those of you that aren't familiar, you're gonna, when you go to fuel up, you're gonna put your diesel in here and the diesel exhaust fluid would go in here. Typically, you're gonna fill this up about once for every three to five full tanks of diesel, okay? It's pretty simple and uh, we'll coach you through that if you're new to that. Now, as we move back into the next compartment here, we have the uh, chassis batteries located in here as well as a master disconnect. And then there's another storage compartment. Here we have uh, the septic storage tank. And more, another septic storage tank. Incidentally, we also have all of these insulated and the aqua hot supplies heat into this area. So this is a coach that you can use very confident in freezing temperatures. Here's the water management bay. And I do apologize if I'm going a little fast, but I really want to make this video about the chassis. So I'm kind of going through here at a pretty good clip. This is where <clears throat> Uh, you would put your water connections into the coach. This is where you can control the gray and uh, the black tank dump valves in here. The first terminology is gross vehicle weight or GVW. The gross vehicle weight of this chassis, also known as the static weight, meaning if I put this on the scale and weight it, how much does it weigh? This coach comes in right now right at 40,000 pounds. The next term I want to talk about is called gross vehicle weight rating or GVWR. And that's a rating put on it by the manufacturer that says, if you put this on a scale, this is how much it could weigh in total. So the gross vehicle weight rating on this coach is 58,000 pounds. So it, it can handle 58,000 pounds, according to the manufacturer. It weighs 40, means we have 18,000 pounds of capacity. You could put up to 18,000 pounds in this, or as I like to say, three F-250 pickups with diesel engines inside of this, and you would still be within the manufacturer's rating of this chassis. Very competent chassis. And the reason most of that is achieved is because when you go to tandems, you go to a 40,000 pound rating. So the manufacturer says you can put up to 40,000 pounds on these rear axles. Okay, now we have just a, another nice backup light. In here we have the Cummins Onan 12.5 uh, generator. So this generator is big enough to power the three air conditioners on top as well as if you're pulling a stacker trailer like I am, I run a power cord out to it and I can power that up. Uh, you could power uh, most households with this generator. Um, it's also produced by uh, Kubota. 
So this is basically a Kubota tractor engine in it. And I say this over and over on the videos, but if you're new to these videos, if you read the operations manual, Cummins own and tells you in here, run this thing a minimum of two hours instead of 10 or 15 minutes. I feel it's always a shame when people trade in a motorhome that's five years old and they only got 10 hours on the generator. Use this bad boy. I mean, put hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands upon thousands of hours on this and enjoy life. That's what this all is about. Life is definitely for the living and it is no practice life. We don't get a do over. So I wanna encourage you, just use these things to their fullest potential. Now we're gonna come into this back compartment and this is where the power reel is. So you can pull your cord out and push a button and it'll wind back in. All of these little things just make staying on the road that much nicer. All right, and poof, just like that, the motorhome is turned around and I'm now standing at the back of the coach. Love this movie magic. Um, anyways, no, we did turn the coach around to help with the lighting on it. I wanna talk about the back of this coach. Um, as you can see, it has two high LED lights as well as the third brake light and then these down here. And we asked for extra lights to be put on it. That's kind of something I've uh, really requested from being in the tow truck driver, being out on the side of the road. I know having extra lights can really mean the difference. This has another term that I want to use with you. It's called gross combination weight rating, which is if you put the motor home and the trailer on a scale and you weighed them all in combination, you could weigh up to 80,000 pounds. So in theory, if you didn't have any weight inside the coach, you could put up to a 40,000 pound trailer behind. Pretty hard to do on a tongue, but in short, you could put any stacker trailer you wanted on this and load it up and you're gonna be well within the capacity of the coach. Hopefully that all makes sense with, for you. And really it all boils down to the data. If you can tell us what you're gonna haul, we can run the numbers on this and tell you what you got. But for most people, myself included, I don't get anywhere near touching the capacity of what this coach is capable of. Some people wanna know what these glad handles are for and that is if you're pulling a trailer with air brakes, you could make that connection right here. For those of the, you that aren't, you can have your electrical trailer brakes connected right here. This is for the Voyager camera. Some people like us to put a second camera on the back of the uh, trailer and we can make that connection right there if you want. Here's a ladder. This is an IWS feature. So we actually build these in our shop. Um, a lot of people like ladders, including myself, so they can get some elevation up there. We also have a upper uh, backup camera or security camera, if you will. And you'll notice the LED light there the two LED lights on this side and the two on the other, and that's something we've been doing for years at IWS. You know, I, I like to call it our security package. You know, if you're camped out on the side of the road and you hear a bump in the middle of the night, you can flip the lights on and you're gonna illuminate this entire coach um, and, and you'll be able to see what's going on outside. Not only that, uh, this 4th of July, we were at a big event in a park and people were coming in off the park and they couldn't see and we turned our lights on and illuminated the park so that people could find their way back to their cars. All of these things that we do are, I mean, uh, there's different dealers and there's different reasons for buying for different people, but we really put our heart and soul in these coaches and we actually use them. My motorhome sitting right there, I beat it. Um, here it is in the winter. I'm getting ready to take it out on our farm. I'm gonna go down there and stay and do some work on our irrigation system this winter. Um, and I'll be staying down there in below zero weather. So we know what it takes and we know what it's like to be parked in the middle of nowhere and hear a noise outside and not have the lighting to see what's going on. So anyways, I'm going on and on, but uh, we're the right company to do business with is what I'm trying to say. We know things. All right, now we're gonna go down and talk about the rest of these. On this side, I'm gonna go pretty fast because most of them are just storage boxes like this one back here. All of these have a remote control so you can lock them and unlock them electronically. 
Here's a really nice big one with a semi pass through. Um, in my coach, I like to store my long tables under there. And when a kid does get a little bit unruly or a grandkid, I can put them in here too. Um, keep them out of the way for a while. <clears throat> I'm just kidding. I would never do that. They get to stay in the bigger box. All right, if we're gonna keep backing up. Here's another storage compartment. Here we are at the Aqua Hot, and we have it running, so the inside will be nice and warm when we get in there. Tell you a little bit about the Aqua Hot. What it is is basically a boiler. And right now we have this boiler running on diesel. It's diesel fired. So the boiler is heating up a, a liquid, a glycol, and it's pumping it throughout the coach. And in different areas in the coach, we have these little heat registers or radiators, if you will. The hot water is circulating through them. And as a room gets cold and you want it to warm up, the thermostat will come on and a fan will blow hot air across that. When you're plugged in at a shore power and you don't want to burn diesel, this will switch over to electric and fire it via electric. It'll also heats the hot water up so you have virtually unlimited hot water supply. And then we also use this with some heat registers, as I mentioned, over in the septic area so to make this more of an all-season coach. This is a great option. I put it on my coach. I don't know as I'd want to own a coach if it didn't have an aqua hot or some sort of hydronic heating on it. <clears throat> this front coach has all of the lithium batteries. So as you can see, there's four big lithium batteries in here. And we also put two inverters on this coach. And why do we do two inverters? So we have three air conditioners on the top and we tie one of the inverters into the center air conditioner so that let's say you're driving down the road, you can run the third air conditioner to cool the coach and you don't have to run the generator. Where we really like it is, let's say it's summertime and um, we're gonna park in a parking lot and go into a theme park or something. We'll leave the third air conditioner running off of the battery so when we come back, the coach is cool. My wife, we travel with dogs. She's a, a champion border collie or a herding person with dogs. We leave a couple dogs in there. We can have the air conditioners running off of the batteries. Um, other things that we like to do with it is, you know, if we're at a race somewhere and 10 o'clock is quiet time and it's 105 degrees outside, we can run that third air conditioner off of the batteries and uh, have about three to four hours of air conditioner time on the batteries alone and we don't have to run the generator. Highly encourage you, wherever you buy your coach, if it's big enough to justify the three air conditioners and you have enough room for these lithiums and you have the money for it, do it. It's just a phenomenal option. Okay, the last thing I'm gonna show you out here is the outside TV. And as I mentioned before, originally I didn't really think much of these until we started using them. And I absolutely love it to be able to sit around in the evening uh, watch a sporting event with some friends, or if you just want to stream music with the sound bar out here, just connect your phone to this and stream the music. Uh, it's a really nice option. Okay, now we're going to go around and, and head inside this coach uh, where it's a little bit warmer, but more importantly, I really want to talk to you about this chassis, and I'm so excited to show you what this Peterbilt is all about. So let's go on in. All right, well here we are inside and I like to start all the videos with talking about how much space do you have in here with the slides in. And as you can see, you have full access to the entire coach. I can come in here, have access to the sink, the refrigerator, the stove, the microwave, the dinette. I also like if I just want to take a break on the road I'm at a truck stop or something. I don't have to run the slides out if I want to go back there and stretch out and take a nap or make a sandwich, so it's really nice. Um, we'll talk a little bit more, but this new coach, a little bit different in mine in the dinette. 
that you have that folding armrest so you can actually stretch out in this like a bed too if you want. All right, with all that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start to slide the slides out and uh, we'll do all that right here on this touch screen. There's also an app on your phone that I use a lot so I can run the slides out off of my app and that's the same thing on this coach. It's nice if you're outside and you're worried about running into a tree or a, another vehicle, you can go outside and operate the slides from there. So the way we're gonna do that is you go right here to this touch screen. I'm gonna touch the slide icon right there. Hopefully you can see that. I'll do it with my left hand. So we're gonna touch this big slide right here and we're gonna go ahead and hit the extend button. Now you can see the slides coming out. They also increase the speeds of the slides, which has been really nice. All right, now we're gonna just kind of work our way around the coach. And my goal here is to kind of give you an understanding of how much space there is here in the kitchen. I'm a six foot guy and you know, you can see there's lots of room right here. You can pull these sink covers off and you'll see that we have a full residential sink in here with a pull out sprayer. These guys back in where they go. <clears throat> we also have a true induction cooktop and you know, way back in the day, I was a big fan of the gas stoves and so was my wife. And once we got a true induction, we absolutely loved this thing. One of the nice features is it just smooths out the entire counter and gives you a bigger uh, workspace if you're not cooking something. We have a Samsung microwave right here. Um, this is also a convection oven, so it does a nice job of that. Lots of storage here. Um, this is the, uh, with the soft close silverware drawer on the top. We've got storage in here. Go ahead and slide this big drawer out. As you'll notice, all of the dovetail construction on the cabinets in here. This isn't some cheap stapled together uh, cabinets. Here's a, a residential style Samsung refrigerator. I'm gonna open it up. Let you take a peek inside of here. Also slide this out and you can see it's got an ice pinker in it as well as uh, extra ice storage down in there. Here's some more pantries. Full length slide out. We really like these in our coach. I'm gonna go ahead and close that. And then down here you can see you've got your circuit breakers and your fuses. So nice and easy to get to. Up here we have the front, of course, we're going to come back to that. I'm going to go ahead and just close it. So one thing about the Peterbilt uh, cab is we can't do the full walkthrough, so you get this cutout. Some people really like it because it's very easy in the evening to add privacy. You just pull this shade down. Up here you can see the overhead bunk, and I'm a huge fan of that. We really worked hard for to do this for our kids and as well as people that travel with us. We wanted something big. We got a fold down television up there. Also a nice nightstand so that you can put your cell phone. We've got a charger right there, USB chargers, as well as light controls up here. So when you're going to bed, you can turn the lights on and as you climb up inside of the bunk, you can turn the lights off when you get up in there. I also love this viewing point port. We put it in almost every single coach that we build. Um, that way you can just stick your head out there if you want to watch the stars in the evening. When we're at uh, sporting events, we like to sit up there and you can get some height advantage on it. It's great if you want to view some wildlife or whatever. It's just a really nice option, I personally think. Now we're going to move around into the dinette and I'm going to go ahead and sit down in this to kind of give you an idea of how much space there is. We have dual outlets they used to be underneath here renegade moved them up which i think was a great idea plug in your laptop or your cell phone charger kids can have games 
Um, this is a really popular area um, on the coach. You'll also notice the two seat belts there. There are two seat belts there and two seat belts in the sofa, so you could have as much as four passengers riding in there. This um, rear facing seat does not have a seat belt in it, but uh, yeah, you can haul four people in it. So it's a really nice, comfortable deal. You also have storage under each, each uh, if I can reach it here, under each of the dinette seats for extra storage in here. Or you can also store the cushions in there. This will collapse down and turn into a height of bed if you have, uh, you know, uh, anyways, doesn't fit a very big person is what I'm trying to tell you. All right, now we're gonna move back. Well, before I do, hold on, let me back up just a little bit. Let's talk about all the storage compartments in this thing. It's in our coach, it's almost as if we have too much storage because we have a hard time figuring out where we put everything. Unbelievable amounts of storage in this coach. Um, something that you'll just never have a shortage of. Okay, now I'm gonna move over here into the theater seating. And I really like this because I have my television right there and it's kind of nice just to come back in in the evenings, stretch out, kick this thing back and kick back and watch a little TV. Got your beer sitting right there. You can have your bride sitting right next to you. In case things aren't going so well, you could put a little divider between the two of you if things get a little bit hostile. You can each have their, your drink right there, or you can just hold hands right here and have a nice resting point. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and fold this thing back down. As I mentioned earlier, it's kind of nice that this folds up so that you could stretch out and turn this into a, a little bit of a sleeping area if you wanted. This is, believe it or not, um, <laughs> This year I looked at getting myself a new coach and uh, they brought in the coach for me to look at and I decided, no, I'm gonna keep my same floor plan because I absolutely love this hutch area. I keep my coffee pot over here. We got our toaster over here. We usually travel with one of our kids. They can keep all of their clothes in these drawers. Um, absolutely love this hutch area. I keep my uh, extra coffee cups up here, my coffee and my water. Can you tell I'm a bit of a coffee snob? Um, this has just been a very handy space. We actually had them put in two different outlets so you don't have to unplug the coffee pot to plug in the toaster, to plug in the cell phone. Um, all of that can happen right here. And the margarita maker can fit right here if you come into that thing. All right, here we go. We're gonna head back into the bathroom. All right, normally I have to step out of the bathroom and say, Scott, come in here and film it, but this one has so much room. Um, as I said, I'm six foot. You can see all of the headroom that I have in here, the shower, I'm gonna open this up, lots of room, and this is all solid surface, which I really love about that is it keeps the water spotting down. It's very easy to keep clean. Yeah, but storage underneath the sink you got all these slide out drawers right here you got a medicine cabinet right here with adjustable shelves in it over here we got a stacked washer and dryer in these compartments all right well now welcome into the uh, the bedroom on this coach and for those of you that have been following us for a while with this this wardrobe closet goes way back with my first coach and we designed this we actually um and renegade for a while was calling it the iws wardrobe package normally you have a tv right here with no shelf and it's a pass-through but this is we've discovered is a great place you know in the evening to set your wallet and your pocket knife and whatever else you got can set up there and it's just a really nice storage area. We also had these drawers installed so you can have your his and hers, you know, uh, undergarments. You have a cedar lined closet, again, his and hers. 
And then we also have the storage underneath. And another thing that sometimes I notice my wife will do is she'll have her mirror right here with makeup and she can actually power the slide towards her and then sit at the edge of the bed and have a place to do whatever it is that women do. All right, we got more storage space underneath here, slide out drawers. I'm not gonna waste your time and open every single drawer, but there's a lot of storage in here. You have a full length mirror. Um, I was using this just a little bit ago to make sure I was representable. I know, I know, quit trying to be so funny, but that's just who I am, that's how I roll. All right, now when we get back here, each side of the bed, there's a 110 outlet. A lot of people with CPAPs find that very important. It's also a great place for your cell phone charger. You got a nice little cubby hole. I personally like to keep my pistol right there so it's close and handy. You got a spot here for your drinking water or your cell phone to lay in or charging. Um, you've also got some little uh, portal windows to see out of each side. You have each of you have reading lights and you have all of the full controls um, of the lighting when you're laying in bed, you just reach up and touch the control buttons right here. Incidentally, all of these uh, nightshades are powered, which is really nice. This is the one, only one that has its own remote switch on the back. The rest of them are operated uh, via remote control. It's pretty nice in the evening. You can just hit one button and close all of the window shades at once. So that's a really nice feature. Also see, we like to put a ceiling fan in here. Sometimes in the evening, that's just a really nice amount of air moving on you if you want to get a good night's rest. They also upgraded the air conditioners uh, with this new trim package that I really think they did a really super nice job on. All right, well, that kind of sums up the bathroom or excuse me, the bedroom. Now we're gonna go ahead and move up to the front of the coach and talk about the chassis, the part I've been waiting to get to. Now I'm gonna go inside of the uh, driver's area. But before I do, I realized I forgot to talk about the floors in this coach. It has uh, ceramic tile floors, but they're heated. And I can tell you in the beginning, I didn't think heated floors were that big a deal until I had them on my coach. And now I couldn't own a coach without it. It's so nice, like on a fall day, if I don't run want to run the aqua hot, if I'm plugged in somewhere, we use just the heated floors to bring the temperature up in the coach. The dogs really like laying on it, and my piggies, my feet, love walking on them in the morning when it's nice and warm. Uh, can't say enough good about having heated floors. All right, now we're gonna go in. So I kinda wanted to show you what it's like to go in and out of here, so here we go. All right, here we are in the front of the cab of this Peterbilt, and I'm, I'm very excited to talk about this and really show everybody what's going on. These Peterbilts seem to be a, a bit of a mystery in the RV industry. They're so hard to come by and they're, they're, they're pretty rare. I have a friend who's very interested in this coach out of Colorado. And I was trying to explain it to him. I said, well, let, let us make a video. So I'm excited to make this video for him as well. So here we are at the driver's seat and the passenger seat. Both of them are fully air ride. So they go up and down air ride. They have air lumbar support. You've also got these armrests on them on both sides. So the seating position in here is very natural. And a lot of people want to know the difference between a class A and a class C for me it's about seating position. When I'm sitting in this truck or this motorhome, my mirrors are in the same position that they would be on my pickup. My wife says when she drives, she feels very natural. She drives a Ford Expedition most of the time. And you just sit up high. You've got that hood out there giving you some reference point. The other nice thing about us, uh, one of these Class C coaches is that we sit closer together. When we would, were driving the Class A, my wife felt like she was always falling off the side of the road. We had to talk a little bit louder because we were about a foot further apart than we are in this particular coach. And the reason she felt like she was falling off the road is when you're in a Class C, the front tires 
sit outboard. So you're inside of the tires. On a class A, you sit outside of the front tire. So as you're going down the road, you feel like you're falling off the side of the road. So it can be very unnerving for some people. Personally, I just love the way it feels. I don't know about how safe it is, but I definitely feel better having that, you know, what, two or 3,000 pounds of engine and front end and wheels out there in front of me rather than just a flat windshield. And my wife always likes to say in you know, a class A, she felt like she was in a fishbowl. Um, here she feels like she's in a truck. We also like being up higher. I feel like we sit up higher in one of these than we do in a class A. So we got some good visibility. And especially when you're driving something big like this, you're always trying to look way down the road. You're trying to anticipate the, the, the car stopping in front of you. I like sitting up high and having that visibility over the top of other cars and pickups, especially when I'm driving through Salt Lake or more of a metro area like that. Now we're gonna talk about the steering wheel. So this has a lever right here and it telescopes, pushes in. You have all kinds of range of move, uh, motion to keep you in the optimum setting. Here you can see all of these other functions. You can control the, the radio channels, the volume. You can answer your telephone just like on most pickups. You've got your cruise control. All of them are great features right here where you don't have to take your eyes off the road or your hands off of the wheel, okay? Uh, you got your classic air horn. Over here I was playing with this light and uh, having just come from the dentist office, I was thinking, wow, you know, if the guy uh, needed to make some extra money, you could perform some dental surgery. This light is that bright. It's pretty impressive right there. And then you have another lower uh, reading light. Up here we have the backup camera and there's a little switch beside it so you can toggle between the trailer camera or the back of the coach camera. So this transmission is a 13 speed Eaton automated transmission. So really what that is, it's a 13 speed manual tr transmission that's shifted fully automatically by the computer. There's no clutch pedal. You just literally put it in drive, step on the accelerator, and it'll progress through all 13 gears. My coach has an Allison six speed in it. Why would the 13 speed be better? Well, especially if you're pulling a big trailer, the 13 speed is gonna keep the engine in the most optimum RPM range, where a six speed, you have these big gaps. I think this is definitely uh, a very exciting and futuristic way to approach these coaches. So I'm all about this new 13 speed. Some other things that we wanna talk about on the coach um, from a driving position, you have a trailer brake controller. Um, also right here, you have your engine brakes. So um, it's a full on engine brake. And the way I like to explain these is, and please understand I'm talking hypothetically here. <clears throat> if this thing is 600 horsepower and it makes say 400 braking horsepower, as you're coming down a steep hill, you can pull this all the way to its max setting and you're gonna, in theory, get 400 braking horsepower. So it's really gonna try to slow you down coming down the hill with the engine compression. The idea would be to come down a hill at, and hold the speed limit all the way down without having to use your brakes or very minimum amounts of brakes. So you can select and again, this is hypothetically talking just for length, just to try to communicate. If all the way back is 400 brake horsepower, one notch forward is 300 brake horsepower, and one more notch forward is 200 brake horsepower, you can choose the braking horsepower you wanna to use to help control you as you go down the hill. Like if you're using too much brake horsepower, you're gonna slow down and then have to accelerate up going downhill. So you can find the optimum setting so that you just leave it on and it just holds you at that speed as you go down the hill. Again, if you buy a coach from us, we're gonna put you through the, our uh, driving program. We're gonna spend a lot of time with you and get you very comfortable. Sorry about that, folks. Um, to turn my phone off. All right, here you have your temperature controls. 
your parking brake. And that's another thing to point out about these. This is a true tandem drive axle. So both of the rear axle drives and both of them have parking brakes on them, both rear axles. So this thing is designed to hold 58,000 pounds on a hill with the parking brake and not roll down the hill. So you have that going for you. Spare tire switch, air, uh, air dump, locking differentials so you can lock each axle together so that you'll get true four wheel drive. Um, could be a great help when you're trying to pull out of a really slick spot. If you've stopped, then you need to get some traction going. Um, you have extra spare switches. So a lot of people like me, I like to have uh, emergency strobe lights. We can turn them on. So if you come to a stop on the freeway, you can flip the switch and all the lights will start strobing. I like extra driving lights, all of that we can put up here. We also have uh, traction control, which it automatically senses if one of the wheels is slipping, it'll engage or disengage. Stereo, all of the uh, uh, gauge functions and everything are available in through this screen. Here's a good look at the dash. I'm gonna kind of toggle the key so you can see the whole dash come back on. So, you have a full uh, flat screen up here with lots of information on it. You can also toggle through all of that right here on the uh, steering wheel and choose different gauge views and all of that. Automatic headlights, so they come on and off automatically. You also have these uh, slide around curtains if you wanna add some privacy. I don't recommend you do it while you're driving. I'm just kidding. Yes, everybody, lighten up a little bit. All right. You got extra lights over here, um, power windows, power adjustable mirrors, all of them functions are right here. I think I already mentioned the air horn. Here's your fully automated um, leveling jack system on this coach. So yeah, you know, I was so excited to get up here and now I feel like I went too fast huh, showing you around this coach. Hopefully as we go back through with some of the B-roll footage and get the close-ups, you can see what you're getting into it's my job or our hope that when you come visit us that you're a more informed buyer well thanks for spending time i apologize if i went too fast on the outside uh, one it was cold two this was all about showing you this peterbilt as always i want to thank you so much for spending time with us and i hope to see you out on the road